Okay, the second last two steps to do is to uh, take the banana shape out of the out of the rib. You can see it rocks pretty good, and then mark it for lightning holes. What I did was uh, I went ahead and marked it. I don't know if you can see it. Two, uh, starting two inches from the tip, I made a tick mark every two inches, and that's where I'm going to put a flute. I don't know how to do that. I've got a pair of fluting pliers. It makes it really handy. If you look at the fluting pliers, I think I got these from Avery Tools, I'm not really sure, US Tool. If you look at them, they're uh, just two rods, they're polished, and then they have another rod that comes in and meets them at the top. And then that basically puts a dimple in the edge of the sheet metal. One thing that's nice about these pliers, if you can see, the bottom two uh, rods protrude further than the top one. And the reason for that is if you take it and put it inside a, uh, a rib, like for this for instance, the bottom two, they meet up right up against the edge of the rib here, and the top one does not extend into the web of the rib. So it'll make a really nice, uh, nice flute without having to uh, damage any of the, the radius that we have here uh, that's in the, in the rib. So what I do is I've got them set just so they just they just barely close when the, uh, the rib is uh, put in between the jaws. And I'm going to start in the middle, just kind of guesstimate right about here, line it up with one mark, give it a little squeeze, flip it around, give it another squeeze, go either side. And start working my way towards the tail and the tip. Now I don't know if it matters if I work from the inside to the outside or outside to the inside or if it even matters if I do one side or the other. It just made sense to me that I would work this way from the inside out and just being cognizant of the fact that I've got to just try to make it straight and still trying to bend the crap out of it. Down here. All right. Take a look at it. Guess what? Rib is flat. Very nice. A little bit of a twist to it. And that's it. Simple as that. It's nice and flat, ready to go. Now, lightning holes. Let me clean this up a little bit. We'll break I always like to keep cleaning this stuff when I'm working with the Sharpie because uh, all the grease on your fingers it just ends up not allowing it to draw. Uh, Bob Barrows, what he said about these uh, ribs, recommends that any lightning holes, uh, the maximum distance or the minimum you should have between the edge and the lightning hole itself is 5 16 of an inch and they need to be at least 5 8 inch apart. So that's what we'll do. We'll lay this out and it'll be really easy to do. 5 sixteenths is the easiest part. All I do is just take a, a ruler here and just mark 5 sixteenths here. And let's see, we'll do 5 sixteenths here. And then I'll just make a couple of tick marks all the way down. Just kind of checking my alignment. And I'll show you how I draw the line on this. So there's five sixteenths all the way to the tip. And what I do is I just take basically use my fingers as a uh, as a reference and just line it up and then I'll draw using my finger as a guide all the way along the edge and these tick marks just uh, verify that I'm not wandering in and out as I'm drawing the line. So here we go with the first one. First tick mark right through the middle, second through the middle, third all the way through the middle. Good. 
and one more on this side. One, oops, see? Went just a little bit too far on that side, so we can go ahead and start over. I can leave the tick mark there. Dries really quick, that brake cleaner. There we go. One, two, three. Right through the middle. Very good. Now, lightning holes. How do I draw those? Well, basically, you're just drawing circles, or I'm drawing circles, and all I need is a template. And what I've found that works the best is uh, just sockets. I've got a whole variety. I've got, you know, regular metric sockets. I've got regular standard sockets. I've got, um, you know, regular impact sockets. So there's just a whole variety of different diameters. So let's say if I need a lightning hole right here, and this is where I plan to do it, I would just make sure that the, the socket, the di di diameter is within the, the lines that I drew the 5 16 border, and there we go. I've got a lightning hole here. Now the next thing I have to do is just locate where the next one's going to go. So it has to be a minimum 5 eighths. So locate 5 eighths this way. And I'll just have to, I don't have a big enough socket right now, but I locate the other socket that big with the edge on it right in the 5 eighths tick mark. Draw a circle and keep on working my way down. The only caveat about that for me anyway, is uh, the struts that are in the vertical stab and also the horizontal stab, uh, they pass through ribs. Now I talked with Bob Barrows about that, if they, if they need to be welded or not. Uh, in the typical Bearhawk with the regular flat ribs, they pass through the flat ribs and they have to be welded uh, on each side so they don't chafe, it doesn't rub against that, uh, that block. However, uh, the option is on the the uh, profile ribs is to have the strut pass through without having the, having the weld. He says if it passes through uh, a rib, go ahead and weld it. If it doesn't, that's fine too. It doesn't have to attach to the ribs. So if you can see this one strut that goes diagonally between the front and the rear spars, it passes through lightning holes. So that's really good. You don't have to do any welding. It just makes a clean installation. So and that's what I'm going to have to do on this one here because there is a diagonal that passes through this particular rib in the vertical stabilizer. So all I have to do is just make sure to fit this, put, uh, fit that tube in there and find out where it intersects this rib and then that's where I'm going to start my lightning holes. So let's say if it intersects here, I'll have lightning right here and then I'll start basing all my, my uh, landing holes on that particular rib from this particular hole. And that's it. Easy as pie. You'll have yourself a really nice looking rib and a very nice profiled looking uh, tail for your bear hawk. Hope the video was informative for you. Thanks.